living under a rock, you've probably heard a lot about the federal census this year. A counting of people living in the United States that's been happening every 10 years since 1790. What is so important to historians, especially in later census, is that the data theoretically counts everybody, not just the rich and famous, and provides us with a trail of breadcrumbs about the lives of a large number of ordinary, everyday people that used to live in our communities. There are a number of ways to access census data. Many paid subscription sites offer search tools, but since this series really looks at free online tools, we will be focusing on those options. If you're interested in just looking at raw census data, the Internet Archive is a great place to go. From the site, you can access uh, digitized rolls of census microfilm uh, for a wide variety, as you can see, of census in the United States. Say we're interested in 1910, we can click on that roll. It's going to list every roll they have related to there over, as you can see, 1700. Since we're mostly interested in Oregon, let's go over to the topics and subjects, hit the more option, and we will select Oregon. Click the apply your filters. Here we have every role that's related to Oregon. Uh, there's one from Indiana. I suspect it's because there's a place in Indiana called Oregon, and that's why that snuck up on us. So let's go ahead and click on one of these roles or reels. And it's going to pull up for you, just like what you would see if you were looking at a microfilm reader. You can scroll through, it'll give you a little background information. Looks like this reel deals with Lane, Malheur, and Tillamook counties. Scroll on and you can see what's a typical census form. Most of these, not most, all of the census that you're going to be able to access uh, were done in a written out form by an enumerator or person that went door to door asking questions about who lived in that, that house at the time. Uh, since we're probably more interested in Marion County, we can also look down here and see that for Oregon, they've given us a little key to which counties are on which reels. I'm interested in Marion County, so I noticed that reel 1284 relates to Marion County. So I'm going to go back to my list of reels. I'm going to find reel 1284. I'm going to select that one. And again, this is the free <laughs> do-it-yourself version, so you're going to have to do a little bit of scrolling to find what you're interested in looking for. If I flip to the right, I got lucky, Marion is the beginning of this reel here, but you're going to have to look and scroll in between to figure out which county you're in um, and do a little guessing and checking in that direction. So I can scroll through, I can look at different pages um, here. Let's Pick up any, pick a page, any page. I, you can look at it with a two-page view here. I prefer looking at the one-page view because I tend to try to click to zoom in, and that's never good. <laughs> so I can use the zoom tool in and out to make it a little bit more readable for me. One of the challenges for dealing with census records is the. Um, handwriting of the person that went out and looked around. So when I'm looking at this sheet, I'm, I'm getting the information of, of where people are from and from this area up in the upper left-hand corner. I know that I'm in the state of Oregon, I'm in the county of Marion, Marion, and then I'm in the township or division of the Almsville precinct, Almsville being a community uh, in Marion County. As I scroll across, I'm going to be able to see a wide variety of information about people that were living in Oslo. I'm going to zoom in one more time here. So here um, is the location. Uh, oftentimes if you're in a city with street names, sometimes you'll have a house number and a street name over here. We don't have that listed on this uh, sheet here, but I do have that the, the residence number and this can help me figure out which, when I'm changing between different houses here. So Alvin Tucker is the first person that's enumerated on this page, counted on this page. He's listed as the head of the household with his wife, Mary, 
their son, Earl, their daughter, Mildred, and then the son, and your guess is as good as mine as what the name of that son is. Maybe it's unnamed. He's only five months old at the time, so that's a possibility. This is going to be a challenge that you run into quite frequently, uh, and sometimes it helps going back and forth. If we go to the next year census or 1920 census, we may be able to look for this family and find that we've got a name um, in this birth order for the children and be able to figure that out that way. You got a little bit of personal description information on the family. So Alvin is a male. He's white. He's 28 years old in 1910. He's been married one time and one married one time. And he's been married this one time for five years. Women uh, like Mary have a little extra information on the census. We know that she has had three children and that she has three children living at this time. We also can see a little bit about where Alvin was born. This first row talks about where the person themselves were born and then the second and third row talk about where the father was born and where the mother was born. This seems a little weird but it actually can be super helpful as you're going through censuses especially with someone with a, as common a name as Alvin Turner to help distinguish between your Alvin Turner that you're looking for and a different Alvin Turner. So this Alvin Turner was born in Wisconsin, his father was born in New York, and his mother was born in Wisconsin. And Mary was born in Canada. Uh, her father was Irish Canadian and his, her mother was English Canadian. Uh, there's, there is a citizenship question on the 1910 census and usually in this column it will show uh, the year that the person immigrated to the United States and whether the person is a naturalized citizen or an alien. Since these were, were both, well, supposedly born in the United States, she was born in Canada, um, but oftentimes in this time period, citizenship went with um, the husband's status. Shows you what language they're speaking in the household, gives the occupation, of the person. So Alvin's a farmer, Mary is nothing. Sometimes, oftentimes women will have listed um, housewife here too. You might see that a lot. Gives you information about the uh, industry. So he's a farmer on a general farm. Gives you an idea if this person is self-employed or not. Alvin does not appear to be self-employed because it says employed. Uh, oftentimes if he was self-employed it would say OA or own account. asks if this person was employed, was out of work or not. No, he's not out of work. And the number of months that he's been out of work, he's not been out of work this year or unemployed. Can he read and write? Yes, he can read. Yes, he can write. And then gives an information if the house that they're living in is owned or rented. O means owned, R means rented, and some more information that we're not gonna go into today. So that's basic information that you're gonna be able to find here on the 1910 census. Different censuses have different questions. It's really important to look at the questions uh, and information that's given up at the top of the list to help understand and, and figure out what they're talking about there. So this is great. You can access all of this census information for free through the um, Internet Archive. However, it's a lot of work to find somebody if you're looking for a specific individual. So we're going to look at a couple of sites that you can use for free to be able to search for individuals. Say I'm interested in learning more about Amos Barker, who used to work at the Thomas K. Woolen Mill. One option I might have, rather than scrolling through pages and pages of microfilm rolls, would be to use an index search site. Currently, you can create a free account with the Family Search site and be able to search the census by person's name and other details. Again, you can search it for free, but you do have to create a, an account with Family Search. So, for example, let's scroll down and see if we can find Amos in the 1910 census. I can hit here. I can put in all the information I know about Amos. Amos Barker. I don't know much other than...
And I know he was from Oregon. So let's hit search. And it's going to ask me for my username and password, which I've already created. And it provides me with people with similar names to the one that I searched for and gives me an opportunity to look directly at that census record. So I'm going to click on this one. He looks the most like what I'm looking for. And it'll give me some information about him here, but also gives me opportunity to look back at that original census sheet. And I cannot stress enough that I think it's the most important thing you do, not just to rely on the indexing that's done. It's good for helping you kind of figure out and go back and forth, but always look directly at the census record itself. Because people can make mistakes. As that loads for me here, I can zoom in and take a little bit of information and look at where Amos is at. So I look up here again, I realize that Amos is up in Multnomah County. And it looks like Portland area. 128 68th Street. Amos, head of the household with a wife named Bertha and a son named Gordon. He's 35. He's been married once for seven years. They have one kid. And it looks like he was born in Minnesota. He speaks English. And he's working as a conductor on the streetcar line up in Portland in 1910. Interesting. May or may not be my Amos that's working at the Thomas K. Woolen Mill, but let's go back and look again and see if we can find more information. So that's 1910. We could go back and maybe look at 1920. Amos. Okay. I'm still going to keep it pretty basic. Hit search. Well, here's Amos Barker again. Let's see what the record has to say. Now he's living in Salem. That's a good clue for me, seeing that the woolen mill was in Salem. Last time we got real lucky in that Amos was right at the top of the sheet. I'm not sure we're going to get that lucky again. So sometimes you have to zoom in and then scroll to be able to find the name you're looking for. Star, Tupper, Crum, Latourell, Johnson, Barker. So it looks like Barker's living at 1811 Lee Street, living with a woman named Bertha and a son named Gordon. Now he's 45 and he was born in Minnesota. I'm feeling pretty confident this is the same guy that was in uh, Portland. And we get over here, textile worker, woolen mill. And it looks like, fun fact, that Bertha, his wife, is also working at the woolen mill. So easy way to start looking through and you can go back and forth between different censuses. Find out more about the individual you're interested in. Thank you.